it's kind of it's kind of happened. You know, H three H three has started to fall off, going from three million to two point eight million, which doesn't sound bad. But these are active viewers. Imagine the people that aren't subscribed and who have now left. In short, his channel is now losing more people than it's actually gaining. If you go look at his views now and his views a couple of months ago, you can see that his channel is down about fifty to forty percent. And sure, I hear you when you mention, you know, what about the disheartening downfall of H3H3 Productions, or why H3H3 deserves his downfall. You, know, you might think, how far down is this hold? Is it under New York? The first video kind of just talked about the transitioning into podcasting, and the second video is more of a trashing slash critique. This is actually the first time there's been an actual downfall. And whatever could have caused it, but politics. Now the best part about politics is the polarization that's caused by online media. You know, everyone has their priest, their gospel, and let's not forget the heretics. And there is this natural inclination online for people to create their own totalitarian communities. You know, it's like we don't debate, we don't accept opposing views, we construct your intent and then harass you. There's very little free thinking in these groups because you know how can you free think when alternative views are the forbidden scrolls? Only to be spoken of if uh, presented in their weakest form and ridiculed. Because intellectual diversity is a type of diversity we can all agree everyone hates. It's a bit like MMA, you just don't want your idea fighting in case it loses unless your idea is on steroids fighting an old man while claiming you're the goat, John Jones. And that's kind of it. Politics online is more like uh, football fans at this point, rather some sort of um, intellectual moral adventure. And despite political people kind of wanting what's best for the world, it always comes at the cost of bringing out the worst in them. But what's worse is that Ethan was fully aware to this. What do you think about the political divisiveness in our country or world right now? And what steps can we take to improve the discussion between, you know, members of the left and the right and passionate members who, you know, arguments between the two typically just devolve into reducing the other side to fools or even downright evil. Yeah, right? right. And now Ethan spends all day on his podcast calling Jordan Peterson evil. And we're going to be using Jordan Peterson because one, he's a great example. And two, he also warned Ethan. So it's got that like poeticness to it. Yeah, well, you surround yourself with people who think exactly the Echo same chamber, way you do. Yeah, circle jerk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and then any... Is that a kind of a shrinking? Of oh, yeah, it's a shrink. Oh, it's a terrible shrinking. Oh, yeah. Well, that's partly why ideologies get so out of hand mm. is because you surround yourself with, with self-reflecting material. You're not mm. traveling. Mm, you're not. You're not you're traveling not a bit. You're not exposing yourself to No, like, no. There's and, no yin yang. And the circle gets tighter because, right. mm. you know, one of your friends... So you've got rid of anyone who says anything you don't disagree, sure. don't agree with. And then one of your friends, you're a little weaker and you're all a little more homogenous. And then one of your friends says something that's a little out of line. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, you're out of here, man. You're the heretic sure. or heretic. And then, well, now you're down to five people around mm -hmm. you and they're even more homogenous and smaller. And then it's four people. And yeah. It's like soon there's nothing left race of to you. The bottom. It's a race to the bottom. Now, to me, how you treat your I don't know, enemies, adversaries, it kind of reveals a lot about someone. Like, think about it. When someone trashes their ex, an old friend, or talks behind someone's back, in the back of your head, you're kind of thinking, oh, that just becomes X, Y, Z, U, right? So let's look at how Ethan treats Jordan Peterson. So he started off by deleting the podcast, calling him a gateway to the alt-right, which his philosophy, his lectures often criticized, let alone the fact that they criticized it on the podcast. I'm sure we're not going to find Ethan later on crying about being painted in with other political parties he's actually not associated with and that he's criticized him. That's not going to happen, right? Like, who would call me out? Like, right wing heads? Like, what do you mean? Well, I'm not a right wing shit. I'm a liberal progressive who basically had some criticism for some of the stuff you've been doing, but mostly agrees with everything you believe in. Not everybody that disagrees with you is a right wing shit head. And that's part of the issue that we're having here. This is, once again, he's trying to put me in the bucket with right-wing heads. Not only that, but I do get yelled at all the time. Who do you want? Like some weirdo Nazi? Like, wh who? Once again, implying that I want Nazis on the platform. But with these two topics, 
these you can actually debate or talk about. You can give yourself enough time to kind of build up your points before the podcast and then offered to Jordan Peterson and his audience will say an alternative view, alternative information. And you know, challenging his views will only ever improve your own knowledge on the subject. But no, he, he just burns the bridge and then continuously mocks him. You love men. An important role to play, you f- a necessary role, and that if they... I sometimes fantasize about putting a penis in my mouth. I can't lie, because I love men. One of the top comments, if I can find it, is like, why does Ethan get mad when others make fun of him for being depressed and on antidepressants, but has no issue continuously making fun of another man clearly going through it? Which he has been doing for years, even controversially mocking him for getting addicted to benzos. Ethan making fun of Jordan's benzo addiction is a new low. Yes. Making fun of mental health. Wow, Ethan. Do they have a point? Or is it all those antidepressants you shove down your f***ing throat? It's- that one is oh. tasteless. That one is is not good. That's not a good take. <laughs> <laughs> He's such an asshole. And this behavior has kind of become normalized. Just imagine if he started to be treated this way. Hmm? Now, there are many videos detailing the uh, toxicity of H3H3. And when anyone kind of speaks up about it, the fans just tell them to go away. And I will say, if your argument for Benzos is, uh, the irony is that he's a self-help guru. Like, everyone has flaws. Some of his advice comes from his own battle with depression. He has stated, I think it was on Theo Vaughn, about his struggle with alcohol. He's never said he's perfect or immune to the human condition with this unlimited 100% mental fortitude. But to hold him to this sort of unrealistic standard of perfection to then discredit him, like you can do that in every profession, even socially, but it's nothing more than another way to uh, attack someone. Like many therapists, A lot of them want to help people due to the reason they wish they had help during their troubled times. Like, and I don't really mind that, right? You'd kind of expect it because it kind of helps them develop more empathy and understanding. And many are also drawn to it in their own journey of healing. And sure, for others, it's a sort of fascination, but... But overall, it's very hypocritical to be a group that advocates against hate while spewing out so much of it, let alone trying to justify it. Like, are, are you sure... You're advocating against it? Also, he never even addresses anything Jordan Peterson uh, says. And remember that, please, because I'm sure, I'm sure Ethan isn't going to whine about people not addressing his points. I knew that he wasn't going to take it well and wasn't going to respond to any of the points made. And basically, it's turned out that that I've been right about that. So, let's fast forward. He started a podcast called Leftovers, intended for fans who didn't really want the politics, with his co-host, Hassan, who's far left, which became one of their most popular shows, often breaking one million per episode, which eventually ended with their last episode, Israel-Palestine. And despite the podcast getting overall good reviews, Ethan ended Leftovers due to mean comments. That is right, the man who continuously mocks people and makes outrageous hateful claims and statements, um, he gets very hideously upset if he's criticized in the comments. Now, the issue was, in its uh, simplest form, Hassan is pro-Palestine, and Ethan is pro-Palestine, however, he is also pro-Israel. Now, do you see the problem here? That, my friends, is the Forbidden Scroll. You see, the in-group is right, virtuous, Yet yeah, he's saying things that an evil out group would say. The occupiers I don't, I do are not civilians. Yeah. That that is what it comes yeah. down to. Like if mm-hmm. he says that every Israeli is an occupier and there are no citizens there, in response to decapitating there are, there are two baby, different, which I can now say. There are two different schools of thought here. So burning families alive, solidarity and victory to the Palestinian people. This is pro Hamas. This man is supporting Hamas. Desert party where they were having a great time until the resistance came in electrified hang gliders and took at least several dozen hipsters. But I'm sure they're doing very fine despite what the New York Post says. But just less than 24 hours ago on the land, from the sea, and from the air, the people of the Gaza I mean, that's insane, right? I, I don't even... Yeah, okay. Like... Okay. 
I, mean, I don't I'm just I, criticizing people. You don't you don't have to comment if you're not comfortable about it. Okay. I mean I I have no I mean I he no, was just like He's even going ahead and criticizing the in group, asking them to denounce other supporters. Ethan is becoming a heretic. Now, I'm not really sure what happened next, but I know what kind of kicked it off. On a Twitch panel, an incredibly racist chart was used by Hassan's friends. I mean, I think we should kind of just mention their excuse and talk about it because some actually, some believe it's not racist. Like, this is like me going, at the top we have white, and at the bottom we have the watermelon lover. And then saying, no, it's not about, it's not about black people, it's about the damage to the environment caused by watermelons. is not it's actually a very easy misunderstanding, <laughs> you know? People, like, ate that up. That's insane. So with Twitch doing this panel, saying they're going to unban some alt-right commentators and letting these people get away with saying some of the most, you know, insidious stuff, Ethan decided to post a video about anti-Semitism getting a free pass on Twitch. I mean, I'm having a hard time seeing this any other way, and what's crazy is that I've, I've been suspecting that Twitch has an anti-Semitism problem. And then on this podcast, he mentioned this. Other companies that don't want to risk having this happen to their product, having this happen to their ships, literally are like, okay, we're not gonna use the trade route anymore. All of a sudden, if you don't use the trade route, trade gets more expensive for the West. Oh, but there's no, what's crazy is there's nobody on the entire platform to call him out. Nobody, they've all been banned. They've all been banned. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Destiny should be unbanned so we can call me out is a crazy take. I said there's no dissenting voices. And he said, Destiny should be unbanned is a crazy take. At what point did I say that? And that's right. Hassan starts to say Ethan wants this rise of right ring commentators, you know, directly supporting the heretics. Even though he's kind of asking for uh, a greater diversity of opinions so people can argue things out to stop each side going to the extreme and all this other stuff. No, 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 no. He's supporting the heretics. And not just that, he gets all his points from the heretics. That's, this is the reason why I didn't want to watch a single fucking clip of Ethan, because I feel like I'm going to lose my goddamn mind, okay? Not because I'm, like, escaping accountability. Like, come on, dude. Come the fuck on. You think I haven't heard these fucking talking points a million times over? If Hassan could at least just respond to the point, instead of saying, I'm Steven Crowder, I'm a right-wing Nazi, I want to kick him out of the country, just talk about what I'm saying. Can we try that? Over. I know the fucking subreddit that you basically scraped these fucking bottom of the barrel talking points from. I know. I hear it all the time from his pathetic fucking fans that come in here and hit me with it every single fucking day. The real reason why I don't want to fucking watch these videos is because I don't want to like lean into the fucking mania that he is expressing every single damn day. Because I genuinely have no idea what he's talking about. Uh, I mean, Presumably, he's once again trying to tie me up with Destiny, but I really don't even know. I it's kind of awkward because Ethan, throughout his career, never really wanted a sort of diversity of opinions until a lot of the narratives kind of went against his own beliefs, so now he's like, actually, <laughs> oopsie. For this one topic, we should have diversity of opinion. But you kind of see what's actually beginning to happen. Ethan is starting to get the same unfair treatment that his political adversaries received. And this also got many political commentary channels to start harassing Ethan. Healer is a terrorist with many more videos. You also got the rise of Hate Free Snark, a subreddit dedicated to Hassan fans attacking Ethan. And anytime Ethan decides to call out these smaller channels or these other people, they say this. I just hate how Ethan is brigading smaller content creators like the D program because he couldn't get to you. It's fucking gross that he keeps picking smaller content creators that are just getting why and he is sitting on his golden throne is just straight up harassment i know he, he's just so out of interest why not go after most critical for the times he's gone after small channels like i've called out people much larger than myself that they're allowed to respond because the thing is right now with ethan anything he does they're gonna go out their way to find the worst perspective possible and then paint on the worst intent one to which they would never actually use on a regular person. One that would only ever be used on their enemies, right? It's not like a sort of objective view of the world. And, and thinking about it, where have we seen this before, Ethan? Is it in your behavior to others? Hmm. Now, after this, Ethan decided to call out Hassan for lying about him. Team star and shit in an effort to try and get me fucking banned is psychotic to me, you know? I just don't get it.
I don't understand it. What a fucking liar, dude. What a weaselly little fucking liar. But the problem I have is that there's our subreddit and our community is over over ridden with these eight year long time ultra fans who can no longer, you know, tolerate us or they can no longer walk down this path with us as we've thrown our lot in with the Nazis, right? But like these same people, okay, have, they, they hold no standards. And Hassan can go out there and glaze an international terrorist organization and its leader and, and, and glaze up Hassan Nasrallah like he's a, a fucking great dude. And would you look at that, you know, people are taking him out of context, warping his ideas, not really even responding to him. Man, it's exactly how he treated his political adversaries. And can I also just say, these small channels are often promoted by Hassan. Like any time a community of H3H3 turns on him, Hassan is watching that video for his entire audience, who has now merged with H3's audience. And he'll say things like, you can't blame them. It makes sense. I don't even recognize H3 anymore. And then he's just liking comments that say, I'm glad Hassan got custody of me and the divorce. I just find it kind of funny that whenever H3H3 H3 wants to try and defend himself, it's just an excuse to attack him further. It's insane. And not many commentary channels are going to be covering it because one, a lot of people don't really want to even touch the Israel-Palestine political debate with a you know, a poll, it's it's a bit too heated and spicy. And two, you have someone like Ludwig, who twice now has basically... L Ludwig will do a video, it will criticize her son ever so slightly. Her son will then message and brigade Ludwig, who will then eventually take the video down, re-edit it, re it, and re-upload it. But in short, H3H3 is kind of just getting this taste of his own medicine. And by alienating and attacking these other communities, he only really has his own community, and now that portions of his community have been radicalized by someone who is, say, far left, obviously the, the, similar to like the right and the far right, the left and the far left, very different political opinions and positions. The thing is, all of Ethan's opinions are now no longer left-wing enough to a good portion of his audience. So Ethan's response has been to take it purely back to entertainment, now keeping the political stuff on his Instagram and personal channel. Which is kind of going down well with the audience that is remaining who still enjoy the humour. The people who are left over are just, are just people who love the show. And it wouldn't surprise me with Ethan being sensitive about comments that he's now asking a member of his team to go ahead and delete the bad ones. And you can kind of see that. If you go into the new comments, many comments that criticize Ethan get a lot of likes. However, they always seem to disappear before making it to the top comments. You even have a portion of his audience who want people like Dan to leave and make their own show. So the views have definitely been going down. His community is in a bit of a... a it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> There's no other way of putting it. The question is, will his views keep going down? Because if you compare his channel to two months ago, it's kind of gone down by 40 to 50%. And don't get me wrong, even with that many people leaving, it is still a successful channel, but it's definitely fallen off from where it used to be. But either way, I hope Ethan kind of reflects on the whole situation and actually changes a couple of things, such as you know how he will then react with other people. Will he treat them a bit nicely now? Will he hold people or his audience to a, whole, you know, a higher standard when it comes to criticizing people? I hope so. And as for his, say, damage control, they're kind of doing the best thing they possibly can. Because the reality is, he's just going to probably wait for it to uh, die down a little bit. And then he's probably going to bring on other famous YouTubers to help promote the channel back up and get the numbers back up and kind of promote some growth. But we'll kind of have to see what happens. But do like and subscribe. I really want to hit 1,000 subscribers. And what do you think about the situation? As I imagine, a range of people are going to be watching this.